Antonio starts right now. <laughs> San Antonio very ready for Wimby. We are just hours away from the moment Spurs fans have been waiting for in the NBA draft tonight. Up next, how Victor Wimbenyama is already being embraced by the Alamo City. And Congress chaos in Washington. What's next now that a lawmaker has introduced articles of impeachment against President Biden. Early this morning, you've already may have seen some flashes of lightning or had a shower or two. We had some here in the downtown area. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is June 22nd. Thanks for joining us and welcome back. Thank Mark. you. Good, Good to, to be you. back. Good to be back. I brought some rain with me. Yes, and, and you brought Wimby. I brought Wimby. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you very <laughs> no, much. San Antonio, thank you. Nothing to do with that. I tried to meet with him, but he was busy with the Pro A finals over there uh, in yeah. Paris. He's a he's a busy guy. <laughs> yeah, so I talked to an Uber driver and, and I was trying to explain to him that the spur he knew the Spurs were, and then he connected that the that we're about to get Wimby and he was he was, I think he was sad to be losing him. Oh, yeah. it's like. Because he's, because uh, he plays for one of the Paris area teams as well. But yes. the big news this morning, we'll talk more about yes. trip coming up. But right now, showers and storms moving through our area. And that's a welcome sight considering the alternative yes. is the extreme heat. Mr. Osterhage. Yes, it was extreme again yesterday. We had some of those showers and thunderstorms. They brought in actually a little bit drier air. So this morning, walked outside. Not as bad. It was not mm -hmm. as bad. Dew points are down about 10 degrees, believe it or not, compared to this time yesterday. And yes, we do have some absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous rain out there as of right now. And all of these uh, showers and a few storms are moving down to the southeast. They are showing signs of weakening a little bit, but you can see there's still a fairly decent cell right there in extreme south, the southeastern Bandera County, right around Medina Lake, just where you need some of that. A few lightning strikes as well. Everything's sliding down to the southeast, only um, 10, 15 miles per hour. And then another batch is moving here into the northwest corner of Bear County. We had this little batch that came through downtown just a few minutes ago, and that's moving through Elmendorf and down to the southeast. So Floresville, you're getting some of that rain as well. So yeah, it is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful site. We will uh, keep some damp roads around. As a matter of fact, here's what it looks like over there at 410 by the airport. Yep, the road is a little bit on the uh, slippery side, so do take it easy as you are heading off to work this morning. 80 degrees, 82 uh, Port SA, 82 in Castroville. So number wise, temperatures are about the same as what they were at this time yesterday. But these numbers, like I said, are down about 10 degrees. I mean, still it's humid out there, but nowhere near what it was yesterday and then throughout the day. So that is absolutely fantastic news. So we don't have anywhere near as high heat index readings. I mean, it still is warm out there, but yeah, it is much more pleasant this morning. 90 at noon, 100 high temperature, still seven degrees above normal, but not 105. So just not that intense searing heat and the humidity should be okay. We'll still have heat index readings that are going to be up there well into the hundreds today, but again, not quite as uh, brutal. So therefore, the excessive heat warning is confined to our south and southwestern counties. Heat advisories in effect up until nine o'clock tonight. Now we do have another chance for a couple of stray showers, thunderstorms later on tonight, but most of those are going to be just sort of on the, the fringes of our northern counties. Maybe one or two around here, but not as uh, not as beautiful as what it was yesterday late in the afternoon going into the evening hours. What about the weekend last weekend of June? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Not as late breaking news. A large number of San Antonio firefighters are on the scene of a fire at a north side apartment complex. This is happening in the 1300 block of Patricia Drive in the Castle Hills area. The initial call came in around 2.30 this morning. At one point, as many as 37 fire units from San Antonio Fire responded to the incident. There are just over 20 units there now. We have a crew still gathering details at the scene. We'll have updates throughout GMSA. This morning, San Antonio firefighters believe a lightning strike is to blame for sparking a house fire. This happened around 730 last night at Barton Rock Lane, not far from O'Connor Road. No one was hurt and the Red Cross is helping that family. Damages are said to be around $85,000. San Antonio police need your help finding a man who may be in danger because of the extreme heat. Ronald Ibada's last known location was the 100 block of Dallas Street, right downtown. He was wearing a black shirt khaki pants and a blue hat. Police say this is an urgent case because of that extreme heat. If you see Ibarra or you know where he could be, you are asked to call the San Antonio Police Department's Missing Persons Unit immediately.
Today, the eyes of the basketball universe are set on Brooklyn, New York for the 2023 NBA draft. And the focal point of that universe is French superstar Victor Wimbanyama. He's been the toast of New York since he landed there on Monday. Wimby says he's in good shape and that he plans to play in the NBA Summer League. Meanwhile, back here in San Antonio, the excitement continues to grow, especially within the French community here. That's right. They're ecstatic about the possibility of Victor Wimbanyama's bright future in the Alamo City. Audrey Brunner is a board member with the International School of San Antonio. And she says French children grow up wanting to play for the San Antonio Spurs. The kids look up to Tony Parker and want to follow in his, hopefully, and also when Bayama's footsteps. It's always an honor to, as a French person, to have a French uh, player go to the U.S. because the NBA is like the ultimate goal for a basketball player all across Europe. And so... Um, I know that it's just a source of inspiration for years to come for French children. So I'm excited about that. She says if you want to make him feel at home, you can cheer for him in French. Aller Wimby, which means yeah. go Wimby. All right, good note. Again, the 2023 NBA draft is tonight. We will have extended coverage this evening at 5, 6, 6.30 p.m. and the night beat. And you can also watch the draft and witness Spurs history starting at 7 p.m. right here on Case at 12. Live reports from Barclay Center with Larry Ramirez will begin at 5 p.m. Right now, taking a live look at Capitol Hill, the House erupting in chaos last night as Republicans voted to censure a top Democrat. House members voted to censure Congressman Adam Schiff. It was for his leading role in investigating former President Trump. And meanwhile, as ABC's M. Wynn reports, at least one lawmaker has now introduced articles of impeachment against President Biden. On Capitol Hill, House members voted along party lines to censure Congressman Adam Schiff for his leading role in investigating former President Trump several years ago. It's a badge of honor, as Roosevelt said in his time, sometimes you can judge a person by the enemies they make. It's a rare move. Schiff is only the 25th House member to ever be censured, only the third in the last 20 years. His Democratic colleagues repeatedly interrupting House Speaker Kevin McCarthy as he read the rules surrounding the censure, which amounts to a public reprimand. House will be in order. Schiff served on the House committee investigating the deadly January 6th attack on the Capitol. And he was the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee investigating whether the 2016 Trump campaign had any ties to Russia. That investigation found Russia did intervene in the election, but found no evidence of a criminal conspiracy. I think the investigation of his misconduct was very important. Uh, it ultimately led to his impeachment, which I was proud to lead. Meanwhile, in a separate matter, Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert has has introduced articles of impeachment against President Biden over his handling of the southern border. ABC News has learned Speaker McCarthy is urging Republicans to vote against the resolution, arguing now is not the right time. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi accusing Republicans of turning the House into a puppet show. This chamber where slavery was abolished, where Medicare and Social Security and everything were instituted, they've turned it into a puppet show. The puppeteer Donald Trump is shining a light on the strings. The censure of Congressman Adam Schiff also directs the Ethics Committee to investigate his actions during the investigations he took part in. M1, ABC News, Washington. Time is running out for rescue crews to find that submersible that disappeared on its way to the Titanic wreckage site. The search will enter a news phase today as the crew's oxygen supply is expected to run out later this morning. Rescuers have rushed more ships and vessels to the site, hoping underwater sounds they detected for a second straight day might help narrow their search. The full area being searched is twice the size of Connecticut in water as deep as 13,000 feet. Coast Guard says they're holding out hope of saving the five passengers on board. A line of severe storms in the Texas Panhandle produced multiple tornadoes last night, killing at least three people. The storms caused significant damage around the town of Matador, located about 80 miles east of Lubbock. The Lubbock Avalanche Journal reported that the storms also produced softball-sized hail and wind gusts topping 100 miles per hour. Matador Mayor Pat Smith said at least three people had been killed and that others may be injured and that there was a whole lot of damage. Lubbock Fire Rescue says it's sending a crew to assist with the damage and recovery. A new report is highlighting alarming trends across the country when it comes to health care. Researchers say they found a surge in preventable deaths in every state largely driven by COVID-19 deaths. 
According to the report, the maternal mortality rate nearly doubled between 2018 and 2021. The report also noted that the pandemic contributed to heightened substance abuse and barriers to care for chronic but treatable diseases like diabetes and cancer. It also reported that medical debt was an issue for millions of people, particularly in the U.S. South. According to the study, medical debt amounts a total of $88 billion nationwide. 440, 78 degrees. And prenatal supplements help make sure mothers get the right nutrition. Up next, we're gonna show you the ones that are endorsed by some of the top medical institutions in the U.S. Outside with TransCAD right now, let's see how things are looking out here. And this was in the downtown area, 35 at St. Mary's. When I was coming in, they were still showing a 35 near Brooklyn was closed down due to that issue in the last couple of days. We'll get an update coming up at the top of the hour from Stephen Cavazos. And looking out there with live cam, I know on my way to work, it was kind of a lightning show and a little bit of change in the weather, not as humid. We're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your day. That's coming up. And welcome back. It's 443. There are a million things to talk about when you're pregnant, and one of the most important is getting the right nutrition. It often means taking prenatal supplements. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Mortz has information to help you make the best choice. I started taking my prenatal vitamin when I was trying to get pregnant. Taylor Frost Smith is following doctor's orders, taking a prenatal vitamin. Hers is high in folic acid. I just don't get enough folic acid in my diet. I don't eat enough fish or spinach. So I'm really hoping that my prenatal vitamin will make up for that. It can be tough to get all of the micronutrients a pregnant person needs from diet alone. So supplements are critical, but they're not all the same. Almost all prenatal supplements have enough folic acid, but when it comes to other micronutrients, many of the available options at your local drugstore have lackluster formulations. Many prenatal supplements don't meet the recommended micronutrient levels endorsed by the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. Take calcium. Consumer Reports looked at 15 popular brands. Ten have calcium, but not enough. Five don't have it at all. Remember, supplements don't face the same scrutiny as prescription drugs. And you don't always get what you pay for. Consumer Reports found some pricier prenatals lack nutrients the cheaper pills have. They found nature-made prenatal multivitamin folic acid plus DHA soft gels has most of the recommended amounts of nutrients, and it's less than a dollar a dose, where some prenatals cost twice as much. Bottom line, prioritize the micronutrients your doctor recommends. Yeah, we still need to get the nursery done. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 445, 78 degrees. And get ready for a summer sales battle royale just ahead on GMSA. We're going to show the biggest deals coming soon for electronics, kids clothing, makeup, and more. And welcome back. It's 448. Let's look at the Rose with TransGuide looking over at this camera at I-35 at St. Mary's. Uh, we know the exit to Brooklyn Avenue along I-35 southbound to upper level is still closed. And we're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos in the next half hour to see how things are going on the roadways. And this stems from that fire that broke out late Sunday night. Uh, flames spread into the highway's water drainage systems, which led to the closure and crews are still inspecting the damage out there. So you'll see that listed on Transguide signs in and around San Antonio this morning. Hi, Mike. Welcome. Hi. Welcome back again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good to be back. What is the weather like over in France this time of year? Uh, they're having kind of a heat wave this year. It's very, okay. very warm. Um, not bad in the morning, but very warm in the afternoons. And as you know, if you've ever been to Europe before, there are many businesses that don't mess with air conditioning. They just don't really need it year round. Yeah. Normally. Ugh. Normally. So that can make, you know, things certain stuff. We get a little spoiled here with our air conditioning <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. So one yes, thing our do. air conditioning has been working overtime the past couple of days. It was Absolutely. nice when those high clouds finally started moving in and you can see temperatures drop down from 105, 103, 102 late in the day. And then yippee ki -yay, we got some rain. What a gorgeous, gorgeous picture seeing wet sidewalks, wet grass. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. And we've got some wet roads out there right now. We are looking over there by the airport off to the northwest and it may, if we stayed on this picture long enough, might see a, a lightning strike out there. So we do have a couple of uh, couple of lightning strikes, but these storms have been sort of dying down just a little bit. You can see there are a few more out there just to the west of Kerrville. One cell with a few uh, lightning strikes here. This one right there around Medina Lake and uh, northern 
Medina County. Now they're sort of dying down a little bit more. And uh, Katrina Weber's out here on the north side. We said err on the side of caution. Don't do a live shot right now. There were a few lightning strikes over here by Hollywood Park, but it looks like or over by uh, Leon Valley, pardon me, but it looks like those have started to uh, die down just a little bit more. And in and around town, we got another shot of some rain there around Leon Valley coming in on 10. So you're going to run into a little bit of that rain. And some of these are continuing, obviously, to work their way down to the southeast, but also continuing to sort of fizzle on out. It is great to see some of this rain, uh, but it's not going to last all that much longer. But everything's moving down to the southeast. 15 miles per hour on average. 67 is the dew point right now. Temperatures 80, still well above normal, but that number is actually down 9 degrees compared to this time yesterday. So still humid, but oh my goodness, it is not like you're walking into a wet blanket when you step outside this morning. It is much, much more comfortable when you walk outside. Now, throughout the day, Temperatures will drop and stay in the mid 70s, mid upper 70s, I should say that 40% chance for a couple of those showers left over this morning and maybe lingering into the nine o'clock hour. If there is anything out there, then we are going to make it up through the upper 90s later on today. Heat index, yes, is going to be pushing it right around 110 or so and we'll top off at 100 today, but not the 105, not with the mid 70 dew points. So we're not going to be seeing those heat index readings like 115 like we saw yesterday. Okay, here's a computer model. A lot of sunshine this afternoon and then late this afternoon evening hours. Now remember this was the time yesterday when we started to see some of those showers and storms popping up. This would be delayed a little bit more and most of that is going to be confined well up there north of our area. Perhaps get a couple of extra clouds in here. Maybe a shower kind of coming on in. I do have that chance for some rain in the forecast, but Mm, I think yesterday was the best opportunity, not unfortunately today, but we're still going to keep that chance in there. Still going to hold out hope for a few more showers and storms tonight, and we're going to be up to 100 today, tomorrow. Then the heat starts to work its way back in here, so we'll be back into the low hundreds. Now, the difference being it's looking like going into the weekend next week, we won't have as high a humidity in the afternoon. So that'll be a little bit of salvation, but still we're looking at triple digits all the way through the end of the month. I saw a note on my KSAT Facebook page. We have a visitor from Great Britain here in San Antonio oh, this goodness. week, and she said our air conditioning is freezing, oh. <laughs> freezing cold. It's <laughs> the, freezing The difference out. from outside to indoors. Yeah, she's yeah. going to go have to buy a parka just to have dinner in any of our restaurants. Yeah. I keep a hoodie in really? my car for that. Yeah. 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 Well, it's kind of funny when you walk from the extreme humidity, yes. and it's like some of that dampness yeah. is, is stuck on your clothes and on your skin, sure. and then you go into the humidity There's, or into the, the dry air, and it evaporates yeah. so quickly. Shivering. There's so. penguins, and everybody's overdressed. Uh, 452, <laughs> 73 degrees. And coming up next, Samuel L. Jackson, five to save the earth from shape-shifting aliens. Plus, the critically acclaimed series returns to FX today. All right, here lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, 393, Fireball 2. Data four numbers, 5902, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 14, 17, 25, 31, 35. Lotto Texas, 2, 7, 31, 41, 44, 50. And your Powerball numbers, 5, 11, 33, 35, 63, Powerball 14, Power Play 2. Good luck. Welcome back to Time Now's 456. So Amazon's Prime Day shopping event arrives next month, but major retailers such as Target and Best Buy are already gearing up with their own exclusive deals. ABC's Becky Worley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, get ready for a summer sales battle royale. There's definitely going to be a mad rush when it comes to certain items from retailers. All of these retailers that are going to be having some kind of sale around Prime Day. Amazon, Best Buy and Target all announcing big deal days in July. From electronics to patio furniture, kids clothing to makeup. We'll see some really notable offers, especially if they're trying to match Amazon's competitive deals. For those households that may be looking to pick up really great deals on necessities, you may see those mixed in with, you know, the good prices on laptops and pieces of furniture and other things like that. And coming up at 7 a.m., we're going to help you strategize what items will score you the biggest deals and how can you make the competition between all these retailers work for you. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California.
457, 73 degrees. It's a race against time to find a submersible that disappeared on its way to the Titanic wreckage site. Up next, how rescuers are narrowing their search as oxygen is expected to run out on the sub this morning. And San Antonio getting ready for Wimby Mania ahead of tonight's NBA draft right here on KSAT 12. Up next, how all the hype is also great for local business. And ahead on GMSA at 6, the Supreme Court says they could be taking up a high-profile Second Amendment case next term. How it could affect Americans in the future. If part of your commute takes you on 35 and Brooklyn, you know it's been a long week with that exit closed and that problem continues this morning. We're checking with Stephen Cavazos. He's here in the studio. We'll talk to him coming up in a matter of minutes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. Experts say the missing sub in the North Atlantic will run out of oxygen sometime this morning. The latest in the search for the five people on board coming up. Back here at home outside with live cam. Don't see any lightning in this skyline shop, but we've had quite the light show in the overnight hours with showers and storms in and around San Antonio. We'll see if that trend continues into our morning commute. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, June 22nd, and I actually broke out the Spurs tie this yes, morning. Very appropriate. Haven't worn for this today. in a while. I know it's exciting. Well, thank you for bringing Wendy. <laughs> And thank you for bringing, oh, bringing the rain. back yes. a souvenir from yes, France from was France. bringing Wimby. Awesome job. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll take partial credit. Yes, but welcome back. We're glad to have you back and uh, glad to see the change in the weather, a little bit at least. Just behind you, uh, you guys didn't see it. There was a lightning strike that showed up here. And also this camera is out there at 10 at 410, pointing up to the north. That's 10 heading out toward the hill country. And they have been seeing some lightning flashes out there as well. So just to kind of keep that in mind, even though the storms are sort of uh, uh, weakening and overall coverage weakening just a little bit. I'm going to show you radar in a second. Uh, it is great to see a little bit of rain out there. 79 degrees out at the airport. That bottom number, if you recall yesterday, replaced the first six with a seven. It was 76 degrees dew point temperature. It is 66 now. It is much, much more comfortable when you step outside. The heat index is 81. I mean, it's still warm and humid, but nowhere near what we had yesterday. We are going to make it up to triple digits again today, but not as hot, not as intense and searing as what it was yesterday. The aquifer took another big hit down one foot, and the allergens, mold, and ragweed, excuse me, pigweed are both on the, uh, the low side. All right, here's a look at what's going on on radar as of right now. And as you can see, we've had these scattered showers and still have these scattered showers and even a few uh, thunderstorms that are moving on through the area right now. Kind of the uh, the leftover little bit of an impulse from the showers and storms that moved through last night. And, you know, a couple of spots with a few decent downpours right here on the extreme south side of Bear County, all sliding down to the southeast and then out here to the north. Even though we don't see a lot showing up on radar, not being detected, even the lightning's turned on right there. There are obviously a few lightning strikes out there, so you want to just kind of keep that in mind. Off to the northwest, we still have a few more of these cells scattered about here and there, some around Medina Lake, so good news for them. And then just to kind of widen out, excuse me, a bit more, you can see eh, nice coverage. It's mostly on the light side, so this will be sticking around at least for the next few hours. Here's a look at the uh, satellite radar loop over the past 12 hours. So we had the first batch of rain move through yesterday late afternoon. Some of those storms did become severe. Still this northwesterly flow, so you get these little disturbances. We kind of refer to it as sort of a, a dirty flow just because you get those glitches in there and you get some of those uh, showers and a couple of thunderstorms to pop up. It won't be as intensely hot today. We do still have heat advisories in effect till 9 o'clock for most of the area and the, the extreme uh, heat warning is in effect down to the south and there's a small chance for one or two storms later Later on tonight to be strong to severe, but most of that's going to be confined, and I think most of the rain is going to be confined further up to the north. So some leftover rain this morning, not anywhere near as humid. You can actually kind of take a deep breath when you step outside this morning. Mostly sunny, like I said, not as searing hot, still 100 but not the 105s we've had for the past three days. 100 again tomorrow. Then we go in through the weekend and basically the rest of June, all of next week, we are looking at low Hundreds. No relief in sight from this heat wave. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. Got some wet roads. Yeah. Hopefully that doesn't mean problems later. 
Not right now, Mike. In fact, I'm uh, not spotting a lot else out there, but we still have this closure day four now, folks. We actually have this closure at Brooklyn Avenue. Now we've been talking about this all week long. This all stems from a fire that occurred Sunday night at a homeless encampment, according to San Antonio Fire Department. Now this actually those flames spread into the water drainage system, which is built right underneath the highway, which made it difficult for crews to get to. They actually had a force 35 to be shut down for quite some time Sunday night into the early hours of Monday. Now the only closure that we're still spotting out there is that exit to Brooklyn Avenue. I did reach out to TxDOT via email and what they're telling me is that there's no estimated time as to when they're going to see that exit reopen. Obviously right now we're not seeing so much of a traffic issue because it's very early in the morning, but 35 southbound you want to be on the lookout for that because a lot of folks will commute through that area very a little later this morning. That exit still closed off, but wide look of the map doesn't show a whole lot else out there. Thankfully we're seeing some quiet roadways, a little bit of construction here and there, and of course as Mike mentioned some of those damper wet roads, so just be prepared for that. None of it is slowing folks down here though. I 10 eastbound. If you're heading in from Bernie, expect about a 25 minute commute at this hour. 28 minutes. Don't need to hurry if you're traveling in from Bolverde along 281 southbound and a 27 minute drive time for our friends that are heading down from New Braunfels along I 35 southbound. Let's get one last look here at 35 at St. Mary's. I'll continue to reference this shot throughout the morning. Just be on the lookout for that. We'll continue to watch the roadways closely and I'll have more updates coming up a little bit later on. Mark Seth. Thank you, Stephen. This man, Brian Ontiveros, will now spend the rest of his life in prison. A jury decided that punishment yesterday after deliberating for about an hour. Last Friday, they convicted him of killing Marissa Jernigan in 2019. Ontiveros was on the run for about three years before he was arrested in Mexico last March. In a statement regarding the verdict and punishment, Bear County Criminal District Joe Gonzalez said in part, quote, for years, the victim's family has yearned for justice and endured the burden of grief and uncertainty. Today, they find a sense of relief and closure as Brian Ontiveros is now sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison. San Antonio police are releasing photos of two women arrested in connection to the disappearance of a 70 year old girl on Monday night. 21 year old Naya O'Donnell and 34 year old Nikki Garcia are both facing kidnapping charges after police say the pair took Amar 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 Amariana Benavides Monday evening, triggering an Amber Alert. The child was later found safe at a nearby hospital. Police say O'Donnell and Garcia have some sort of acquaintance with the little girl, but haven't given any specifics. SAPD is still investigating the incident. It is draft day and the hype around the French phenom known as Victor Wimbenyama has only grown by the day. And here in San Antonio, Ta San Antonio murals and jerseys have already been created in Wimby's honor. His highly anticipated arrival isn't just filling up seats at the AT&T Center, but also pints at local bars. All the hype is driving much needed business back up. And it's even better that Wimby has been expressing his excitement about becoming a part of the community here. Trying to do interesting things to get people to come back. So when Benyama is just the icing on the cake. Season ticket holder for many years and uh, bought again this year <laughs> because they got Wimby. And if you want to take part in Wimby Mania, we have a list of watch parties for tonight's draft right now on our website at KSAT.com. Again, the 2023 NBA draft is, is tonight. We'll have extended coverage this evening at 5, 6, and a special at 6.30 p.m. and the night beat. You can watch the draft and witness Spurs history starting at 7 o'clock sharp here on KSAT 12. Live reports from the Barclays Center with Larry Ramirez will begin at 5 p.m. Well, now to the urgent rescue mission this morning to find the missing submersible in the North Atlantic Ocean with five people on board. Experts estimate that the crew could run out of oxygen sometime this morning. And as ABC's M1 reports, rescuers are hoping underwater sounds they detected for a second straight day might help narrow their search. This morning, amid a rapidly depleting oxygen supply, it's a critical time for rescuers to find the five people on board the missing submersible called Titan, which disappeared on its way to the Titanic wreckage site Sunday. Experts estimate the crew will run out of oxygen sometime this morning. The U.S. Coast Guard had tried pinpointing repetitive banging sounds picked up on sonar equipment, but came up empty handed. Navy experts now analyzing those sounds. We need to have hope, right? 
but but I don't I can't tell you what the noises are. This comes amid a growing international rescue effort as more ships and aerial crafts rush to the area where the sub vanished, covering an area twice the size of Connecticut. The French coming equipped with deep sea robots that are able to free the sub if it were stuck, though it wouldn't be able to lift it to the surface. On board, Ocean Gate's founder Stockton Rush, as well as a British billionaire and adventurist, a Pakistani businessman and his son, and a world-renowned Titanic researcher. Veteran explorers say the crew's conditions are dire if they're on the ocean floor where temperatures are below freezing. Your body uh, will start shivering uh, to generate heat and uh, that will use up more oxygen. So that's not a good thing. And now, new claims that bureaucracy may have delayed life-saving efforts to find Titan. According to National Geographic, the deep sea exploration company, the Explorers Club, tried sending special underwater drones shortly after news broke about the sub, but was told by government officials to stand down. They have been reaching out to U.S. authorities and saying that there is a concern about how to retrieve this vessel if they could find it. The Coast Guard has since confirmed one of those drones is now en route. After the sub lost communication on Sunday, experts questioned why the Titan didn't trigger a buoyancy device and float to the top, hypothesizing that it wasn't just a communication failure. M1, ABC News, Washington. Time now, 510 and 78 degrees for now. Instagram is finally giving its users more control of its Reels application. Up next, how content can now be shared outside the app. Extreme heat making people adjust the way they work. Up next, how one local lawn care company is still getting the job done under intense conditions. We've had some showers and storms around this morning. You may have seen some of the lightning flashing through the bedroom window in the overnight hours. Right now, the sky looks good. We'll check on those showers with Michael Strange coming up a little bit later on in this half hour. 514, now that the summer season is here and lawn care companies say they are feeling the heat. Because of the higher temperatures, companies say that they're changing their typical hours, working earlier in the morning to avoid the high afternoon temperatures. Now, businesses also say they're extending water breaks and time in the shade between lawns. One lawn care owner says the summer heat can be tough to deal with, but he is focused on keeping his staff safe. Like right now, like maybe like freak out a little bit, but like I've gone in past seven other summers, so I mean, we'll get through this one too. And health officials say if you don't need to be outside, you shouldn't be. We have a list of warning signs of heat illness and some safety recommendations on our website at KSAT.com. Now 515, 78 degrees. Up next, how an Apple podcast update is making it easier to find content in your favorite genres. Checking traffic right now, 35 at 410. No problems to report. Just have that one little hiccup here in the downtown area as far as an exit closure. But otherwise, things are looking good so far. We'll talk to Stephen coming up later in the newscast. Your shipping manager left to find themselves, leaving you lost. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. Feeling sluggish or weighed down could be a sign that your digestive system isn't at its best. But a little Metamucil every day can help. Metamucil psyllium fiber gels to trap and remove the waste that weighs you down. And also helps lower cholesterol and slow sugar absorption to promote healthy blood sugar levels. So you can feel lighter and more energetic. Lighten every day the Metamucil way. And Metamucil psyllium fiber also comes in easy to take capsules. In 16 years, Greg Gerstner will land the perfect cannonball with friends he's already meeting now at AARP volunteer and community events to help make sure his happiness lives as long as he does. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. Welcome back. It's 518. We're still asking more questions yes. about his trip. Yeah, one of the interesting things I was telling them about Paris that I, because uh, I've never been, uh, a lot of Paris is under renovation and uh, they're getting ready for the Summer Olympics next year. So they've already done a lot of work. And here's the other interesting thing. You know how the opening ceremonies is a grand thing, usually in a stadium full, you know, as the athletes come in. I'm hearing uh, that the French are planning to bring part of the Arab opening ceremonies down the Seine River 
through Paris. Wow. So part of that will be on, on river barges as part of their opening ceremonies next summer. They've got a lot of Very work cool. to do. One of the biggest ones that needs to work still, they're racing to finish the fire damage at right. Notre yeah. Dame yeah. Cathedral, and they're hoping to have that done next You'd year. You'd probably think that they might incorporate the Eiffel Tower somehow in the opening ceremonies, sure. the Arc de yeah. Triomphe, yeah. all the, you know, yeah. so. But it was a wonderful trip. It's yeah. good to be home, though. Good to see you guys. It's been two weeks, so good to see you guys. Yes. Uh, no macaroons? <laughs> no macaroons? No, oh, okay. I didn't. No. They don't travel I, well. I met oh, President okay. Macron, but no macaroons. <laughs> No, well, you know what? No uh, berets with our names. <laughs> That's what we get said, No right? matching. No berets. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, traffic's looking good, though. I mean, I mean, at least for right now, welcoming uh, Mark Austin back. And you know what? Uh, not seeing a lot else out there. 410 at Marbach. You can see things have just been moving along. Hey, OK. Roads may be a little damp or wet out there, as Mike mentioned earlier. So just be on the lookout for that as your commute does get rolling. The only big problem of the morning, it ha or I should really say of the work week, has been this closure here at I-35 southbound upper level. That exit to Brooklyn has still been blocked off. Now remember, this is due to that fire that occurred Sunday night, which forced a closure there of I-35 southbound. It's since reopened, but that exit still remains closed. And according to TxDOT, there is no estimated time as to when we will see that exit reopen. Obviously not causing an impact with traffic, at least just yet, but you want to be on the lookout for that as the commute does get moving this morning. Other than that, Mike, roads are looking okay, but definitely a little wet out there. Yeah, uh, it's going to be damp for the uh, the morning commute. And since we haven't had a lot of rain in a long time and it hasn't been overly heavy, you know, there's going to be the oil, the dirt and everything like that. So it's probably pretty slippery. That will wake you up if you are, I shouldn't say sleeping while you're driving, but those lightning strikes that we had around here yesterday. Also, and I'm going to leave this picture up here just a little bit because there's not a lot showing up on radar as far as indicated lightning, but we've been seeing a lot of flashes. This is the camera down here at Brook City Base looking up toward the north. Also, thing to point out, Look at how much better looking this picture is than what it's been the past couple of days because the humidity has been just so thick in the morning. It, this has been either hardly visible or completely obscured because of all that humidity. Of course, just as I want the lightning to strike right there in that picture, it's not going to. Anyway, here's what it looks like on radar right now. And we've got a lot of, I mean, it, it's decent coverage. Most of it is on the light side. We've got a few heavier cells in here, especially in northern Atascosa County right there, just to the east of Divine and uh, heading in toward Pleasanton. A couple of them and sliding down to the southeast in and around town. We've got just a few showers here and there. We've got a few that are moving through 281 right there by the airport and then on the south side 410 heading over toward Elmendorf. So it's just assume that most of the roads in and around town are damp because we've had a few of these showers sliding through all morning long. And then, of course, further out to the northwest right around Medina Lake, you're getting some decent rain. A couple of lightning strikes. These are the ones being detected. And again, I keep seeing out of the corner of my eye that uh, live cam from Brook City Base and we're still seeing some lightning strikes being detected around the area. Maybe some of these right here, this one cell that does have a few uh, lightning strikes associated with it up there on the northern fringes of Bear County. 79 degrees right now, 82 Port SA, so we're still well above normal. These numbers are about the same as what they were yesterday, but these numbers are down a good, on average, 5, 10 degrees at least, 10 degrees lower than what it was at this time yesterday. It's much more comfortable when you step outside. We'll keep a couple of these showers around this morning. Then we are going to make it up to 90 at noon. We will hit 100 today, but the past three days have been 105 and it's just been brutally hot. So still hot. Yes, we will still have a heat index to deal with, but it's not going to be as intense. And also small chance for a couple of more showers, a lot more sunshine today. And then later on tonight, another we've got this northwesterly flow, another couple of showers, thunderstorms are going to be developing well up there to the north, but uh, most of these, the rain chances, it won't be uh, unfortunately a repeat of yesterday. Most of these are going to be staying further up there to the north, but at least there will be a little bit of rain out there and hopefully we get some clouds coming in here as well late in the day. 100 again tomorrow. Again, we'll have some of those showers, a couple of lingering ones overnight as well. And then a weekend, it's going to be getting back into the low hundreds but it is looking like we won't have quite the intense humidity in the afternoon. We'll kind of go through more of that cycle, more humid in the morning, less humid in the afternoon. So the heat index readings shouldn't be as high, but it's still going to stay 100s all the way through the end of the month and starting off uh, July next oh, weekend. We'll just have to get used to those triple digits. Hmm. <laughs>
<laughs> as much as we can. Guess so. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 524, 79 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, 393, three, Fireball two, Daily four, 5902, Fireball three. Cash five, 14, 17, 25, 31, 35. Lotto Texas, 2, 7, 31, 41, 44, 50. And Powerball 5, 11, 33, 35, 63. Powerball 14, Power Play 2. In today's Tech Bytes, a major update to Instagram Reels. Users can now download Reels posted by others to their own camera roll. You just have to hit the share icon on a Reel and then select Download. An update now to the Apple Podcast app has made it easier to find content. Nine new subcategories are featured, including mental health, relationships, and parenting. Each comes with a chart showing top shows in your market. The main and subcategories also come with new artwork. And dating app Bumble is reportedly testing a separate new app strictly focused on platonic relationship. Bumble for Friends, or BFF, is designed to help people make new friends in a community that promotes kindness and safety. It's expected to be released in the U.S. sometime this year. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rhiannon Alley. Have a great day, everyone. And time now is 528 and 79 degrees for now. In Washington, the House has voted to censure California Representative Adam Schiff for comments he made several years ago about investigations into Donald Trump's ties to Russia. Just ahead, why members of Congress are now turning to publicly shaming each other during government proceedings. And now may be a good time to lay off the chocolate candy bars. We're going to tell you why the price of cocoa is starting to go up. Plus, it's called the most expensive home in America. Up next, we'll tell you, if you, you'll sit right there, we'll tell you how much you'll have to pay to become the prince of this house in a town called Bel Air. Making headlines this morning in Washington, Representative Adam Schiff says a Republican censure shows he did the right thing in leading the Trump impeachment. This is basically Trump and MAGA world going after someone they think is effective in standing up to them. Up next, how some Republicans are planning to try to impeach President Joe Biden. And looking out there with live cams starting at 78 degrees, not as humid as it's been. And we've been enjoying a little bit of a light show early this morning. We're going to be <laughs> checking in with Mike very soon about what we can expect the rest of the day. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 22nd. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far. And Thanks for bringing the rain. Yes. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. I can't take the credit for all this stuff. <laughs> and windy. You should. You know, and it, windy. <laughs> it was great to see the, the showers and storms developing yesterday. And you know, I was watching the thermometer go up and then watching it. Like, come on, clouds. Come on, clouds. <laughs> and yeah, the clouds came in. You could see the temperatures still dropped down. Wow. I mean, we still got up to 105 yesterday. Not a record, but three days in a row at 105. And now, yeah, we are talking about the lower humidity that kind of came on in here. So look at how much clearer how much crisper that picture looks as of right now. It is still humid out there, but nowhere near what it was yesterday. So uh, you don't get slapped in the face with a wet towel when you walk outside because that number is uh, 10 degrees lower than what it was at this time yesterday. We're still on the warm side. We're still six degrees or five degrees above normal right now. And we do have some showers out there still. And as you can see right here around uh, Balverde going in toward Timberwood Park, we do have a couple of lightning strikes that are still being detected around here. Some light uh, showers from Leon Springs down toward Lotus. Uh, nothing real intense. There's obviously nothing severe out there at all. And we still have a few more showers out and even a couple of thunderstorms right around Bandera in and around Medina Lake. And everything's kind of broken. It's been a nice Nice little shower that has moved on through here. Nice showers that have moved on through here in a couple of storms as well. And we have a few more heading down 37 in toward the coast. So this will be sticking around for the next couple of hours. We'll have a few leftovers here and there, and then things are going to be dying off. We've got this nice northwesterly flow in the atmosphere. So there's the batch of rain that moved through last night and the second wave that has come through. Then there is the chance for another couple of showers and thunderstorms late tonight, but not as good as what we had yesterday. We're not going to be as intensely hot today, so it's heat advisories in effect up until 9 o'clock for most of the area. But yes, the excessive heat warning still remains in effect for our southern counties. A couple of those storms, if they do pop up tonight, may be on the strong, potentially severe side. We do have mold and pigweed both on the low side and CPS has uh, knocked it down from yellow to a green energy conservation day. And if you want more information about that, you, of course, can uh, go to their website or scan that QR code out there. So throughout the rest of today, 
We will have a couple of leftover showers hanging around here this morning. Roads are going to be on the damp side, 90 at noon. Yes, we will still be hot. We will still be seven degrees above normal, but not as hot as the past couple of days, a little more tolerable and tomorrow about the same situation. What about the weekend? What about next week? Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, any big problems out there this morning? You know, Mike, it's pretty quiet over here. 410 at Marbach. I have the cameras on rotation right now. 281 at Hildebrand. Remember, slow down before you approach that curb, folks. We're not seeing a lot of issues. US 90 at Couples, east and westbound lanes. Pretty quiet right now, but of course, we're keeping an eye on things, especially with that closure at 35 near Brooklyn Avenue. We'll get a shot of that in just a moment, but you could see, for the most part, the commute is pretty quiet. Maybe a few more folks out there than what we saw in the last half hour, but there's that shot at 35. St. Mary's. That's the exit to Brooklyn Avenue, and it is still closed at this hour. This is day four, guys. We've been keeping a very close eye on this area due to a fire that occurred Sunday night that spread into the water drainage system. And of course, it led to a big closure there along 35 southbound. And right now, we do know that that exit is still blocked off, but not sure how long it's going to take for it to reopen. Remember, crews tend to spend some time out there testing the integrity of the structure to make sure it's safe for us to drive on. So just pack some patience this morning, not impacting traffic, but not seeing any impact with traffic just yet here either. 37 northbound, pretty pleasant from Pleasanton, actually 30 minutes to the Alamo City, 30 minutes along uh, US 90 eastbound. If you're heading in from Castorville, this early perfect time to hit the roadways. And right now that your arrival from Lytle should take you about 18 minutes or so. But let's get one last look here on the trans guide cameras. The commutes may be getting busier there at 410 at Perrin Bidal, but I'll keep a close eye on things and I'll have more updates and other road closures to be on the lookout for coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark. Natalie, breaking news, a huge fire in an apartment complex has sent two people to the hospital and left more than a dozen others out of their homes. Broke out just a couple hours ago, not far from Churchill High School on Patricia Drive near Parliament. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, we understand some people have also lost pets. Well, that's right. Firefighters were telling us, unfortunately, they did find a couple of pets dead after this fire. Now, when they got here, their focus, though, was on rescuing people, people who were stuck on their balconies as flames closed in on them. And this is the building affected here. You can see fire crews just uh, having sort of a debrief there after this work that they had to do. I want to show you what they faced as they got here, show you the video of those huge flames that were coming from the second floor of this apartment building here at the Icon Apartments. They say that uh, the fire seemed to have started there. They found flames here just before three o'clock when they arrived. They say that there were people on their balconies that they had to rescue. Uh, one woman went to the hospital after suffering some minor burns. Another woman, they say, injured herself as she jumped from her balcony. The firefighters did have quite a job on their hands, knocking down those flames. Uh, they say that this entire building is affected. There are 16 units in all, 15 occupied. And so they are working with the management of this apartment complex to try to place those people in other apartments and try to find them some accommodations. Now, right now, there's no word on how this fire started, although we have had a lot of lightning in this area. They say it does not appear that that had any bearing or was any cause of the fire here. But that investigation does continue. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Taking a live look in the nation's capital, the House Ethics Committee is set to review a censure resolution against Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff. That's after Republicans passed it along party lines yesterday. The resolution involves Schiff's role in the first impeachment of former President Donald Trump and the Russian probe. As CNN's Amy Kyler reports, it comes as some other lawmakers plan a potential impeachment vote of their own. Well, look, it's a badge of honor. Representative Adam Schiff says a rare party line vote to censure him yesterday shows he did the right thing. It's over his role in the first impeachment of former President Donald Trump and the Russia probe. Threatening national security, undermining our duly elected president, and bringing dishonor upon the institution. Schiff says that's false and defamatory. This is basically Trump and MAGA world going after someone they think is effective and standing up to them. The resolution refers the matter to the House Ethics Committee despite Democrats' objections. They've turned it into a puppet show. A puppet show, and you know what? The puppeteer, Donald Trump, is shining a light on the strings. The timing of the resolution is notable. Will Representative Schiff present himself in the well? Some Republicans want to vote on impeaching President Joe Biden this same week. 
The irony is not lost on House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who's trying to dissuade them. We're going to censure Adam Schiff for taking us through impeachment and lying to the American public, and you want to turn around the next day and do the same thing. We just 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 I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The Federal Trade Commission is now suing Amazon. Amazon accused of engaging in a years-long effort to enroll consumers without consent into Amazon Prime and make it difficult for them to cancel their subscriptions. In a complaint filed in U.S. District Court for the Western District of Washington, the agency accused Amazon of using deceptive designs known as dark patterns to deceive consumers. Amazon says the FTC's claims are false on the facts and the law. The Federal Aviation Administration is launching the Stand Up for Safety campaign to help reduce near collisions on aircraft. It's requiring thousands of air traffic controllers to attend new monthly training. The agency said it will dig into topics that are driven by data and seasonal challenges. Now, the first topic will address reducing incidents at airports. In recent months, the FAA has made other changes in ATC towers and facilities. That includes requiring supervisors to have a more hands-on presence during busy times. Finger licking good, or is it? For the first time, U.S. regulators have approved the sale of chicken made from animal cells. The move allows two California companies to offer lab-grown meat to the nation's restaurant tables and eventually supermarket shelves. The Agriculture Department gave the green light to Upside Foods and Good Meat. The firms had been racing to be the first in the U.S. to sell meat that doesn't come from slaughtered animals. But don't look for this kind of meat in grocery stores anytime soon. Experts say cultivated chicken is much more expensive than meat from whole farm birds and cannot yet be produced on the scale of traditional meat. Time now is 541 and 78 degrees for now. The most expensive home in the U.S. is now up for sale. Up next, how much it costs and what comes with this 60 room, 40,000 square foot estate. And how about some chocolate for breakfast? It's about to get more expensive, though. We're going to tell you why cocoa prices are inching higher. Mm, chocolate croissants, I'm just saying, <laughs> OK? Outside with live cam right now, some clouds, leftover moisture from uh, showers and storms we've had in the area all morning long. Looks like a lot of them has fizzled out, but we'll talk to Mike about that coming up. 544 in your morning consumer headlines. Looks like you'll have to lay off drinking hot chocolate this summer. That's because cocoa prices, which have already been soaring, are expected to climb even higher. So far this year, cocoa futures have risen about 21%. That is bad news for your sweet tooth or good news if you're trying to eat more healthily. Uh, industry experts say the deficit is due to crop disease and heavy rains that have hampered cocoa harvesting. Another reason is the forecast of the upcoming El Nino, which usually brings warmer global temperatures, which are poor conditions for growing cocoa. However, some chocolate companies are welcoming higher prices, saying the prices have historically been too low for Western Africa cocoa farmers to earn a living. $250 million for a house. Well, a Georgian classical mansion called Casa Encantada in the famed Los Angeles community of Bel Air is, is for sale. And the price tag? A quarter billion dollars, making it the most expensive home for sale in America. But this is no ordinary home. The 60 room, 40,000 square foot estate built in the 1930s sits on eight and a half acres and adjacent to the Tony Bell Air Country Club. It also boasts 18 foot ceilings, a huge dining room, card room, a pool bar, a screening room, lighted tennis and basketball courts, a rose garden, tons of trees, lush landscaping, and a greenhouse. You know who should snap that up? Harry and Meghan and their little family of four because oh. <laughs> I think it's a little closer to downtown LA than where they're living right yeah, now. That's more of what they're used to, I guess. Uh, perhaps. Yeah. 546, 78 degrees. And coming up next, the Animal Defense League is standing by with this adorable little pet. We're gonna show you how you can start the adoption process coming up next. You've heard the phrase snug as a bug in a rug? It's a, just a little, oh my goodness gracious. Nadia's here from the Animal Defense League. Who is this little one? So this is Biscuit and he is part, he's currently one of our fosters and part of the Doe family. Get it, Biscuit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's about four weeks, so he has a little bit of time to go with us, but yeah, we're fostering him and he has quite the personality and super adorable. But wrapped up like that, you rub him on the 
and he's about to just nod off. So, and that's the thing with these little babies like this, they need all of this hands-on care. I, I don't know, do they have a mom? Or? Yeah, so they okay. do have a mommy, uh, but the easy part is that she takes care of all the feedings as often as they need it. Mm -hmm. The cleaning, you know, we yeah. take care of it and just making sure she gains weight. But then to help out, because it does take a lot of hands-on work and they don't have enough hands is how many kittens that they have there. So right. fosters, fosters, and more fosters. And you can do it for as long as you want to, right? Correct, yes. We have singletons, we have whole families, we have neonates, which right now is the biggest need, and we're needing about 10 to 15 families a week right wow. now to be able to save more lives. Okay. So, yeah. And, I mean, you're up in the middle of the night with the crying baby and feedings and all that, but a uh, great little experience for the kids, too, to see if they can actually take care of a little kitten like this. So if you'd like more information, again, these are not up for adoption yet, but they soon will be, and they desperately need fosters. Mm -hmm. Head on over to the Animal Defense League, 11th year in Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center, PetSmart, <laughs> or ADLTexas.org. Thank you, dear. So cute, like a little cat taco. Um, all right, let's get a look here. We have 35 at St. Mary's. This is a shot I will continue to show you throughout the morning. And, and as long as we see that closure, guys, be on the lookout. This is that exit to Brooklyn Avenue that remains closed following Sunday night's fire. Now, we do obviously see folks are commuting through that area without any trouble, but give it some time. We'll likely see some congestion because a lot of folks tend to exit that uh, area and it's going to get busy. But let's get a look here at the map. Lots of construction. Haven't had a chance to talk about what's taking place here in Kendall County. Rail and painting repairs. This started on Monday. We're going to see a portion of that work wrap up tomorrow, but we still have a few days to go. Nine in the morning to three in the afternoon. Alternating lane closures on the frontage road in both directions from State Highway 46 to US 87. So if your travels take, take you through Kendall County, just be on the lookout or always head over to ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of closures. But back here, this is the one closure that will likely impact a lot of drivers commute, Mike, but also be on the lookout for some of those damp roads. Yeah, it almost looked like there was a drop in that lens uh, behind you right there. And yesterday, a lot of folks got some lightning. We had a lot of big light show going on with these storms, and we still have a few lightning strikes that are being detected as of right now. Thank you very much for the the KSAC Connect picture. And is my clicker not going to work for me right now? All of a sudden, let me do something over here and see if I can fix it here. We have got showers and a few uh, thunderstorms. Well, we'll just do it like this. And let me, uh, well, I'll tell you what, Mark, if you can space bar through that for me. There you can see this is a live cam over there at 10 at 410. And there were a few drops on the lens right there. And as you can see, the road is kind of damp. Go. There we go. And uh, as far as rain, we do have some showers and maybe a few lightning strikes. And this batch has sort of uh, formed up a little bit. And now we've got a couple of decent downpours that are working their way into town right now. And let me just stop this for a second. You can see this is extending from right around Leon Valley, SeaWorld area, up in toward Hollywood Park. Again, a, a decent downpour here and there right around uh, Castle Hills. And this is sliding down to the uh, southeast at a fairly decent clip and then elsewhere looks like that's pretty much the tail end of it. We still have a few more showers down there right around southern Atascosa County. And as far as the uh, the rest of today, uh, we're going to have a lot more sunshine around here, but then we go into the nighttime hours and we are going to be seeing some more of those showers and thunderstorms trying to develop further up there to the north. So let me see if I can jump ahead to the end and you may have to uh, click ahead. Bear with us here and if you can jump to the uh, seven day forecast, please. If uh, yeah, we'll just go through this. There's the chance for some of those storms up to the north to be potentially on the strong to severe side. We've got this northwesterly flow around here and uh, yeah, there's the low which is down to the southwest of us. Maybe if you can just stop it and jump out of that and just uh, jump to the seven day because the producer in my ear giving me a time cues right now, but it's been nice to see some of that rain. It is drier air as of right now, and that's what's making it more comfortable. By the way, there is Tropical Storm Brett that's going to be moving in through the uh, the Caribbean over the next couple of days, and <laughs> there's a lot in there. So yeah, bear with us. Uh, high pressure is going to start to build in here, and what that's going to do is then keep temperatures. We'll be at 100 today, not as humid, 100 tomorrow, but then as that moves on in, kind of slides and a little bit closer to us. That's going to then heat things up as we go into the next seven days. There we go. 103s by Sunday, and it's going to stay in the triple digits through next week. We'll be back.
Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, Wemby Mania reaching fever pitch as we approach draft night, where you can watch festivities around the Alamo City. Plus, the extreme heat making people adjust the way they work. A one lawn care company is getting the job done under intense conditions. And up next, severe storms overnight have turned deadly here in Texas. We'll take a look at where and what's being done to help those on the ground. And checking Transguide right now, we still got an exit closure 35 here in the downtown area. Stephen will get you up to speed coming up next.